Hello guys, today we're going to be working on a Kenmore 70 series and the model number it's on the display. Also model number and links for parts replacement will be in the description of this video as well. Welcome to DIY Repair Now, read all the warnings and during this video you will see one or more of these icons to help you do this repair safe. So the complaint that we have is that it's turning on but it's not heating. So we turn it on, put our hand inside the uh, drum, and we don't have any heat whatsoever. Now we're gonna go ahead and check the filter. And it looks like the filter needs to be clean. The first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and check for voltage. Make sure we get in um, 240 volts between those two uh, outlets the ones on the side is for 240 volts and if you connect one on the bottom and one on this side which is the uh, the one on the bottom is the neutral it's supposed to give you 120 121 122 around there so I'm gonna go ahead and grab this better the way I can show you guys that if we put one in the uh, neutral or ground it's supposed to give us 120 it's giving us 121 as long as it's above 120 you should be fine and between the two uh, outlets on the side will be 240 now we're going to proceed to remove the back cover and find out why this dryer is not heating Uh, by the way, these are one quarter screws. So just remove all the screws that are holding this back panel. And now we're going to remove the um, uh, cable wire out of the way. And we're going to begin testing the um, uh, thermostats. Now remember that this cover has it's on the way on the bottom just yes, whenever you finish take pictures before you remove any wiring that way you remember how they were however if we have to replace this thermostats the new thermostats are totally different now i'm checking continuity between the heat element and the uh, metal that way i can check if it's ground or not at this point it looked like the heat element is still good. It's giving me continuity between the two leads on the heater and it's not giving me any continuity on the uh, when I press one on the leads, the terminals and one on the uh, metal housing. Now I'm checking the cutoff thermostat and I'm sorry the cables on the way, but you know, I'm testing for continuity on the thermostat, the cutoff thermostat, and I don't have any continuity. So everything looked like is the um, cutoff thermostat and also this um, high limit thermostat which is it was already falling apart as long as i was start working on it so at this point the part that we have to replace it it calls cutoff thermostat kit so it comes two pieces on the um on the bag and it's a kit of two thermostats the high limit thermostat and the uh, cutoff thermostat which is the one on the top the one on the top is the one cuts off when you know it's overheating or you have any dryer vent problem now at this point i'm removing the high limit thermostat and this is the one is different from uh the new one between the new one and the old one this is the cutoff on the right and on the left is the high limit now this is the two new um, thermostats and like I said they are a little different and right now what I'm doing is just trying to strain up this part of the housing because it kind of bent over when I was removing the old thermostats. Now this is the new thermostats and there will be like I said, a little different from the manufacturing one. Now, I'm gonna mention this a couple of times because 
in this repair i didn't have a lot of room to work so maybe the footage are not you know that good but it would be up uh, some paperwork be careful with sharp edges and anything like that or if you're using the knife like i'm doing in this footage now as i was saying if you have any concerns or anything it doesn't look good in this footage remember that it's going to be a paperwork in a diagram that shows you how to install this new uh, parts right now i'm trying to scrape the wire and i'm doing it with the knife because this wire and this end it looked like it was overheating and it was not coming off with the uh, regular pliers for scraping wire so i have to use my knife as you can saw as you saw in that footage now we're going to replace the one at the top which is the most easy one that's the cutoff and that's the one cut off uh, by overheating and prevent the washer from coming on now at this point i am replacing and fixing that red wire however for you maybe that wire is still good you don't really need to repair that wire if it's good now in my case that wire was burned out the terminal was uh all black and stuff and and brown and burned out so i am replacing it this terminal does come in the um in the back and that's what it's is meant for because most of the time that um wire terminal would be bad it also brings this one this one you have to cut it and install the new one again it does come on the bag for the thermostat for the cutoff thermostat kit so you don't have to buy any um uh, additional terminals now this one is important and you have to replace it because it brings a a male and female uh, terminals on it and that is meant to connect the other wires because remember like i told you at the beginning of the video that this thermostat is different from the new ones the um, installation is not the same from the old one so just follow the video and like i said if the footage are not helping you that much remember that it's going to be some paperwork that it will guide you um, to perform this repair the right way now i am installing the uh, new high limit thermostat in place and the other one uh, i don't know if you see in the footage that it was different than this one and but this is the right part I just want you to know that if you order this part it's not going to look nothing like the um the old one the existing one now over here like i said just follow the paperwork or just follow the video and you will be able to perform this repair um the right way as you see this terminal is meant to be connected in the small um, I mean on the big terminal now it was a small terminal before but now it's a, it's a big terminal and it will have another wire connected to it so as you see you have to connect this one the yellow one in that position in that terminal and this one will connect on that same um terminal because it has a male to female connection again it's a little confusing and my camera angle was not that good but here's the paperwork you know this paper will be in this um kit that provides everything that you need to perform this repair as long as you have the right tools to do it which is a wire scraper uh screw a uh, one quarter screwdriver and maybe a, a pliers and a Phillips screws driver as you see i'm putting it right next to it and it will you know i'm just comparing everything that i did with the paperwork make sure i got everything right again we i probably have a couple more videos doing the same repair but this is the kenmore 70 series and i didn't have much space to work with 
Now, right now, what I'm going to do is make sure nothing is ground and everything that I connect is giving me continuity before I turn on the dryer. And this will tell me if I perform a good repair. Now, this is the one was bad. And as you see, now it, it does give me continuity. So this means that the problem is already taken care of. Now, yes, to make sure uh, those um, thermostat doesn't go bad just because if those thermostat goes bad is because you probably have a dryer vent clock or something like that. So to remove that part of the vent on the dryer, you have to remove these two Phillips screws and check that part of the duct in the back of the dryer. As you see, now the piece is coming off. Sometimes you have to wiggle it to come out and look how much um, length is in here. However, I don't think this length was creating that issue. But again, this is part of a maintenance. Uh, we already scheduled another day to come back and do a better uh, maintenance for this dryer and a dryer vent cleaning. So we will come back another day and perform the driving and cleaning and, and clean the dryer better. Now, remember I told you at the beginning, this back panel has its way. You need to put it the right way in the bottom. Otherwise, it's just going to keep falling off while you try to put the screws. As you see, it's sitting on the cabinet. So... At this point, we're pretty much done. Just install all your one quarter screws that holds this back panel and the electrical cover. Damn. And the two fitted screws that holds the uh, duct on the uh, filter, uh, filter lint trap which is this one. See, we have a little bit of lint here. We're gonna clean that up too. And we're gonna go ahead and turn on the dryer and make sure it's heating. We're gonna put the filter back in place. Push the washer, I mean the dryer back in place and turn it on. Now wait yeah. about a minute before you get some heat. I mean, it's gonna take a couple a couple seconds for the heat element to heat inside the the dryer inside the drum now i put my hand yeah. in there and yeah, it's hitting the way it's supposed to this repair has been a success thanks for watching